Hello, everyone. Welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan, episode 34. I'm your host, Jonathan Rector. You guys can check out my site at jonathanrector.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at Art by Jar. Uh, so this week, what I wanted to talk about was how to dry, dy- draw, dry, <laughs> how to draw dynamically, and uh, I thought I'd give you some examples of. Uh, some people that watch my previous shows, and I've talked about it before, uh, I like to start my morning off with doing some gestures, even if it's 10 minutes or filling up two really quick pieces of paper, just to break the sleep off and to get energy in, in my mind. It just feels like it's a little more meditative to do it this way. And uh, I just wanted to share little steps, and uh, maybe I, I do get some emails and questions from people asking, you know, like, hey, how can I draw more dynamically? How can I just draw better in general? And first, I just want to say real quick... I always, always never want to come across as saying my way is the best, my way is the only way. Uh, I still have tons of learning to do, um, but I do want to share some stuff that I've learned along the way uh, to help some people out. Uh, They might have some questions. So uh, I just wanted to quickly go over some examples of uh, just, you know, some sketches that I've done. Uh, Just trying to get the dynamics in there. And what I mean by dynamics is to have energy in a pose, you know. have this guy look like he's coming right at you, stuff like that. Uh, Here's some more. And I will say... all of these, maybe one or two in the morning, I'll actually do um, on my own. The rest are all done from reference from comic books. And uh, I, I suggest looking at comic books or uh, animation, cartoon, anything that's really uh, you know high energy, uh, larger than life. And for me, when I'm looking at dynamic stuff, what I like to look at it are people like Jack Kirby, especially Jack Kirby. Uh, a lot of the old school guys that uh, really started to set the bar of uh, you know action in comics uh, that I, that I like, and you might be more interested in doing something uh, more modern if, if you're a little younger, perhaps. Uh, you know, people like Joe Matarera I talk about a lot. Greg Capullo, great guys. You, basically, what you want to do is find the most animated artists that you know and. Uh, just try to. It's not copying. It's just trying to think of ways of doing shapes and uh, just gestures. Keep it quick. Keep it simple. Don't worry about making everything all anatomically correct. You know, uh, some things like this I push a little further with some anatomy, but uh, I say we just get right into it. So some of the fundamentals that I think that you should know before we get into this, you should have a basic understanding of anatomy. If you're doing uh, animation or cartoons. Uh, Anatomy still plays a very huge role. Um, you need to understand foreshortening the concepts, and uh, you know, I, I would suggest that you have a decent or a solid background in some sort of art, or um, you know, you've at least tried to draw a little bit before you start getting into some things. So, why why even do dynamics? Why do or even try to think in a dynamic way? Let's say you have, and I'll use superheroes, even though people don't like them. That's too bad. <laughs> So we'll say you're going to have a regular guy, you're just doing a quick gesture of a superhero, um, we'll call him, it doesn't matter what his name is, but uh, we'll say you're drawing him and he's just standing there, you know, he's ready for, he's waiting for crime to happen, to spring into action, and he's going to go tackle them, you know, he's going to use his powers and take them out. So we'll say that's just a quick gesture. Let me move my camera up a little bit. And, uh, you know, this could pass very well, you know. There he is, standing, ready to go. Maybe I could cross his arms, just to make him look like he's really waiting. But he looks so uninteresting and so static and boring. It doesn't matter how much time I could spend rendering a, a you know, a really ripped shoulder and a really ripped arm, you know, to make him look cool by adding muscles and shading. Crap. This is boring to look at. Some things you might want to consider, definitely, uh, you know, instead of just doing your regular shape for a chest, you know, why not really shoot it out, you know? And and the idea with dynamics for me, that really helps for me, is try not to hold your pencil like this close up, you know, when you you get real close to your table and you're getting in there with the details and everything's looking nice. Try to back up as much as you can comfortably on your pencil. Uh, This way, the line, you know, just starts coming out much quicker, you know? It's just, it just is what it is. And the idea is you want to get motion, motion, even though this is just a sketch. Um, you know, and we'll toss his pelvis down here. Just keep everything really loose. Uh, right here is where we'll put a, an arm. That'd be where his neck goes. Uh, his shoulder on the other side. Flare those legs out a little bit more. And uh, instead of a straight down arm, you know, put it to the side a bit. 
And one thing uh, heroes are always known for is to have their chest protruding as if uh, <clears throat> they're on like a fashion runway or something, you know. Uh, this is about a, as much of a gesture as I would do. And you can go in here afterwards and start adding your, you know, like a quick anatomy. Uh, if it, this was uh, a study that I would do in the morning, this is pretty much how I would do it. I'll actually show you a little bit more of exactly how I go about doing it. Uh, you know, pop that chest out, bring his abs in. He can shoot his other arm out there and the rest of his, uh, you know. And immediately, to me personally, and again, this is a taste thing. Is All this stuff always comes down to taste and preference. This looks much more interesting than this. And it's not because I added more lines or more dark lines but or invested more time into it. It's just you're, 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 you're trying to get a little bit more, you know, power into what you're doing. Um, I totally forget what I was going to say next. I, I know I was just talking about it, but... Uh, Oh, okay. How I would draw in the morning. So we'll say it was just a, a guy walking towards us. Um, so we'll just start real quick. Normally what I do is I throw in the chest. I uh, will say he's leaning forward, you know. Uh, I guess that's where his neck would go. Uh, that would be where an arm's going to pop out, another arm's going to pop out. Uh, there's the center of the chest real quick. Um, we'll get his pelvis in there, like that. And this is where things get a little uh, iffy for me. Some people, they like to do the stick, you know, like a line to a a ball to another line, and that works when something's, you know, whatever, when you need to think of it and you can't really picture it, but if you have the reference next to you, sometimes I don't think you necessarily need that. Uh, what I recommend doing is, uh, you know, throw whatever's in the foreground. Start working on that foreshortening. Uh, so we'll say that we'll put in his kneecap. Uh, the thigh is in perspective, so it always has the meaty part right up here, and then it does this little dip over there. And then this is going to lock into a, a calf. Which will go into your foot, and then this one will flare this one out. Again, even though a leg, if you look at it from the side, uh, the thigh comes in here into the kneecap, and then the kneecap goes like that into the calf, and that will go into your leg. Uh, when you do that for sh for shortening, um, you know, if you do that straight thing like this, it looks kind of boring. So what you want to do is really bend things up a bit. Um, so instead of just doing that traditional thing, you know, like really start to curve things out a little bit. If you guys can see a little difference in this as opposed to this. And here for the arms, what I usually do is I usually always do a circle for the shoulders. It just, especially a hero, they, they generally have uh, bigger shoulders. Um, we'll do some foreshortening. So we'll say there's his wrist, there's his forearm, his bicep will be sneaking back there, and then there's the rest of his shoulder. And we'll throw his hand out here like he's about to throw a blast or something like that. Which goes into the forearm, shoulder, like that. And I know this is probably coming off really, you know, quick. And I, I'm probably not explaining things as, things as much as uh, some of you guys would like. <laughs> and I apologize for that. But uh, really, it, it just boils down into making your shapes much more vivid and much more... Um, like jelly, you know. If you have somebody standing ba on their back, or standing on their back, standing with their back to us, you know, we'll just do that kind of a shape for their back. Maybe get that line in there just so you can see where everything's going. Uh, here we'll put their butt. Continues over here, and then this is where uh, you know you can start messing around with your uh, dynamics. I ideally you want to think in shapes. But always push and pull. That's definitely something you want to do. Always be concerned with, are you pushing enough? Are you pulling enough? Um, you know, so this leg would be in front of us. This one we'll put behind. Or maybe we could bring it over here, you know? You can start to see just by, look at look at this shape. This is so ridiculous. It, it, it's, it almost seems like a crime. <laughs> like, no leg would follow that. But when you start putting your muscles over top of this, when you start putting your anatomy over it, you know, you'll make it work into it. And uh, once you have a, a decent understanding of how anatomy works, you're, you're basically just outlining your outline with proper anatomy. And it makes things just pop alive a little bit more, you know. Uh, you know, you could toss your arms here, but uh, it looks like we're almost done the video, if not already done. I should get a real, a better timer than just using my <laughs> clock that I have on my computer. 
And uh, there's clearly some uh, anatomical problems here, like his, his chest is too big. I, I was just trying to show you guys uh, how to push and pull and just, just to think about that. But uh, next week, I'll probably go into this a little bit more. Uh, and if you guys have any comments or questions, maybe I'm not bringing something up right, just let me know, leave a comment, and I'll definitely address it in the next video. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys can always check out my work at jonathanrecker.com. Again, you can follow me on Twitter, Art by Jar. And if you want, please subscribe so you can keep yourself up to date on the videos. And thanks so much, and we'll see you guys next Friday. Take care.